regardless of if the circumstances that you're in right now feel lucky or feel unlucky, regardless of the situation that you're currently in, that you can still choose to be happy. You can still choose to have peace and knowing um, that those circumstances can change tomorrow for good or for bad, but none of that will be um, a direct correlation to your happiness or a direct correlation to your peace if you choose uh, to be happy and if you choose to have peace. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, All right, back at it, lone wolf style again. Joseph is actually doing some coaching right now, so I wanted to go ahead and knock this episode out because you know this episode is a little bit more personal as it was something that I was kind of going through in my head uh, all last week and I uh, wanted to kind of put into podcast form for you guys today. And it's on the topic of luck. This is episode 128 of the Sales Wolves podcast. We're going to talk about luck and maybe unluck. And do you believe in it uh, or do you not? And I'm going to go through a, a study that I found that may you know, start to change some of your beliefs that you've had or held on to for, for some time. But you know, this really all came about from a trip I was on last week in Nicaragua, um, down serving some of the communities and children and families um, in an area that our organization has supported for a number of years. It was my first trip down there. Um, my business partners have been, you know, numerous times, eight, ten times, uh, but my first trip down there, and really, you know, one of my first experiences at seeing, you know, poverty with no opportunity. You know, it's one thing, you know, to be in the United States and you see poverty with opportunity, but to be in a place where, you know, there's really zero opportunity, um, that, you know, the biggest thing that they're working towards is to be able to just eat every day and provide food for their families every day. Uh, no less try to, to make it anywhere else or, um, you know, succeed to any degree of which we would look at success in our own lives. Uh, and it really, you know, got me thinking about luck. And I think the common verbiage or rhetoric around luck in the entrepreneurial space, the influencer space, the motivational space, really across social media is that it doesn't exist, right? You see all those, you know, memes of make your own luck or, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I got. And, and that general consensus, which, you know, I've believed in for a long time. Uh, and I do believe that, you know, the more, uh, the more you work, the more time you put in that ultimately the luckier you will get in that you are, you know, receiving opportunities and receiving, you know, becoming into situations that you wouldn't have come into if not for the hard work put in, if not for the talent uh, that you had and the skills that you've perfected over time. But does that make you lucky or does that make you just a product of the work? But what I, but really what kind of what, where the snag was in that thought process for me is, is as I was walking through this trash dump in Nicaragua where there were literally families fighting, you know, these giant birds away, these buzzards or whatever you want to call them, vultures, um, fighting them away uh, from the food that they were trying to provide for their family. And looking at these people that that's what they were doing every single day and not necessarily looking at it from a lucky perspective. Am I lucky to be in the U S am I lucky to be in an opportunity where, or to be in an environment where opportunity is everywhere, but more looking at the flip side. So those that may not believe in luck, do you believe in someone's ability to be unlucky? Cause as I was looking at these people, I was like, man, that's just, it's just unlucky that they, that they live where they live. It's unlucky. Um, that they're in this environment and knowing that it wasn't anything that they did are doing or could do that could potentially change it in a, in a massive way. They were in an unlucky spot. And so I started to think to myself, well, if, if I now am saying that it's you know potentially possible to be un unlucky, then does that make it to where the, 
the opposite has to be true, that that there is circumstances where luck does play a role um, in someone's success. And I think that, again, entrepreneurs, influencers, thought leaders, people that you see up on a stage or speaking like this on a podcast would always love for you to believe that no, you know, luck has nothing to do with it. That's why you should listen to me. That's why you should hear the things that I want to want to um, convey to you. That's why you should buy my ebook and join my mastermind. And that's why you should follow these doctrines because, you know, that's the way to ultimately give you success that luck plays no role in it. And it makes them feel like they're more important, right? Or those that have had success, it makes it that much greater because there was no luck involved in it. And I just don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. And so I found an interesting article and it was in this, it was a blog in the scientific American.com. And I just want to run through this um, study real quick with you guys. Cause I thought it was extremely interesting It says, in an attempt to shed light on this heavy issue, there were some Italian physicists, uh, who I can't pronounce their name, uh, but they teamed up uh, with an Italian economist to make the first ever attempt to quantify the role of luck and talent in successful careers. So basically, they captured this phenomenon that they proposed as basically a toy mathematical model. So they created a model that would basically um, depict 40 years of evolution in a career over a collective population. So they took and stimulated an environment that would make it appear as though within this square, that this was a society with lots of moving parts over the course of 40 years. They somehow created this mathematical model for that. And if you see this picture, for those of you that aren't watching the podcast that are watching this on YouTube, you can see it's just a bunch of individual people inside this box. And they were going to create this model that would look like the next 40 years being played out. And so it says the Italian researchers stuck a large number of hypothetical individuals with different degrees of talent into a square world and let their lives unfold over the course of their entire work life. They define talent as whatever set of personal characteristics allow a person to exploit lucky opportunities. It's funny because in this article, he said that may be the best definition or a reasonable definition of talent. Because again, he said talent is a set of personal characteristics that allow a person to exploit lucky opportunities. So talent can include traits such as intelligence, skills, motivation, determination, creative thinking, emotional intelligence, etc. The key is that more talented people are going to be more likely to get the most bang for their buck out of a given opportunity. And so all agents or all individuals began the simulation with the same level of success, which was 10 units. Every six months, individuals were exposed to a certain number of lucky events and a certain amount of unlucky events. When a person encountered an unlucky event, their success was reduced in half. So if they started with 10 units, it would go to five. Whenever they encountered a successful event or a lucky event, their success doubled proportionally to their talent. So if they still had 10 at that point, it would double to 20. Or if they had had an unlucky event, went to five, you know, had a lucky event, it would double to, to back to 10. And so what did they find out after they played out this model over the course of what it amounted to 40 years? So, well, first they replicated the well-known Pareto principle, which is basically the 80, 20 rule, which predicts that the small number of people will end up achieving the success of the most of the population that did play out uh, as we typically see in society. Uh, So the 20 most successful individuals held 44% of the total amount of success while almost half of the population remained under 10 units of success after 40 years. So this is consistent with real world data. The interesting thing is it says, although such an unequal distribution may seem unfair, it might be justifiable if it turned out that the most successful people were indeed the most talented or competent. But what did the simulation actually find? On the one hand, talent wasn't irrelevant to success. In general, those with greater talent had a higher probability of increasing their success by exploiting the possibilities offered by luck. Also, the most successful agents were mostly at least average in talent. So talent did matter. It's saying talent did give people the opportunity to 
exploit those possibilities offered by luck and that the most successful people in that box were at least average in talent. However, talent was definitely not sufficient because the most talented individuals were rarely the most successful. In general, mediocre but lucky people were much more successful than more talented but unlucky individuals. So let's, let's, let's unpack that again. Talent was definitely not sufficient because the most talented individuals were rarely the most successful. It said that mediocre, so average talent people that were lucky were much more successful than more talented people that were unlucky. It's interesting. It said, consider the evolution of success uh, for the most successful person and the least successful person in one of their simulations. And it gave a bunch of different, you know, graphs and all this def different stuff that we're not going to dig into. But I think the important thing is the highly successful people had a ser that had a series of very unlucky events in their life, whereas the average talent person that has a series of lucky events in their life, the average talent person ended up going further than the highly talented person that, um, you know, just had some unlucky events, uh, and, and go on throughout the course of their life. So it said, even a great talent becomes useless against the fury of misfortune. I thought that's interesting. Even a great talent becomes useless against the fury of misfortune. Talent loss is obviously unfortunate to both the individual and to society. So what can be done so that the most capable of capitalizing on their opportunities, given the opportunities most needed to thrive. And so that's, that's basically the question. So this, this whole study basically found that it wasn't the most talented that ultimately became most successful, that it was actually those that were average talent, but had significant, significantly more luck play out during their career. And so we can try to, um, diminish the luck factor in our life. We can try to, you know, shed light on all the other areas like talent, like hard work, like preparation. But at the end of the day, luck does play a role. And I think it's, you know, to what degree of luck and to what degree of ultimate success that person gets to in how we really quantify it in that person's life. Uh, but I think to just say that luck has no bearing on a person's success is completely ridiculous at this point. And so I think it's just an interesting conversation to have. Um, again, whether it's looking at someone as being lucky or as someone as being unlucky, it's still going to come down to their ability to um, their ability to take full grasp of that lucky opportunity or of that lucky scenario that's created at the right time. And so for those people that maybe had adequate talent, mediocre talent, average talent, Maybe they were someone that when a lucky opportunity did arise, they were willing to jump on it. Whereas the next person that had average talent or maybe even above average talent wasn't willing to jump on that quote unquote lucky opportunity. And so as I look at my own life and I look at the last five years and how that's played out going from being flat broke to, to where I am now, I cannot sit here and say that there wasn't an element of luck that was involved that I wasn't lucky to have gotten involved with the business partners that I've gotten involved with. Um, you know, the way that, that, that interaction and, and that relationship was first started, that wasn't by some grand design of my own. I didn't create that scenario. Um, it really happened by luck that, you know, Nathan and Joseph and Jeff became mentors of mine. And then I went into business with them. That was rather lucky on my part. Um, now, you know, I did believe that I had above average talent, um, whether that's true or not, but I was able to capitalize on that quote unquote lucky opportunity that arose. Um, and throughout the years of different encounters and people I've met along the way and interviews that I've done and, you know, a lot of hard work has gone into being in a position to, capitalize on those opportunities, but those lucky opportunities still came about. And so I think if we, if we, if we discredit the favor of luck in our lives, then I think we do ourselves a big, you know, disservice. 
I think that we, you know, discount the opportunities that are still out there that we know nothing about, that we're not preparing for. Um, and whether we want to leave that up to our faith um, and say that, you know, faith and it's our faith that that allows us to believe that, you know, no matter what path we're on, no matter where we're at, that things can still happen in our lives, that opportunities can still arrive and that it's through our faith that those things happen. I think that's that's certainly a positive thing. Um, whether we want to look at it as, you know, karma and that the good things that we do and the things that often sometimes go unnoticed, um, whether it's those things just coming back around, uh, and that if we do good, that good things will happen and those happen in those lucky opportunities that arise. I think that's a positive thing to look at it that way as well. But I do not think that we can look at successful people now and say that nothing in that person's life happened with, without a single bit of luck, that there was never a business deal, that there was never a business encounter or maybe a business deal that didn't happen, a business encounter that didn't happen, a trip that they didn't go on that could have been catastrophic, a relationship that could have formed that would have been catastrophic to the business, a meeting that could have happened that could have led to another meeting, to another meeting, to not jumping on this opportunity, or a meeting that did happen that led to another meeting, to another meeting that did lead to an opportunity. There's so many variables in here. For us to say that luck has absolutely nothing to do with it, I think at this point, uh, would be a little bit silly. And so, you know, where, wherever you fall in, in this line of luck versus unluck versus there's no such thing as luck for there's maybe no such thing as unluck and you know, wherever you fall in there, I would just ask you to look at the course of your life and look at the course of those that you follow, um, those that you surround yourself with and just start asking some, some questions. Like, was it sheer talent? Was it sheer will and hard work? Or was there some elements of luck uh, that played into, into the, the ultimate success of that person or unsuccess of that person? I think it gives you a little bit more empathy and a little bit more compassion for each and every single person out there. Uh, again, having this conversation stem from my time down in Nicaragua, seeing people that, you know, I, I couldn't look at their situation and say, you know, that, that they were lucky. Now, I think the way I'd love to close this out is by saying whether you are an unlucky person or a, a lucky person, whether you are a person that is of average talent that's gotten lucky or above average talent that's been unlucky or any combination of, the, of those uh, variables, at the end of the day, we control our happiness and we control uh, our peace. And that was one of the greatest things that I got out of this trip to Nicaragua was seeing people that that was their life going into these trash dumps, but then being able to see them at church and see them worshiping and see them smiling and laughing and seeing their kids laughing and running and playing and, you know, really not knowing any different, you know, knowing that they're going to have to get up and go back to the trash dump the next day, but still being able to have a smile on their face when we were talking to them. Um, understanding that their happiness didn't come from what they were doing. Their happiness came uh, from, you know, who they belong to. And, you know, I think that, that was extremely powerful and it's an extremely encouraging thing for everyone that can hear my voice to hear is that regardless of if the circumstances that you're in right now feel lucky or feel unlucky, regardless of the situation that you're currently in, that you can still choose to be happy. You can still choose to have peace and knowing um, that those circumstances can change tomorrow for good or for bad, but none of that will be um, a direct correlation to your happiness or a direct correlation to your peace if you choose uh, to be happy and if you choose to have peace. And so, you know, interesting concept today, very different uh, look at this podcast on the uh, idea of being lucky or unlucky. Um, and I'd love to get your feedback. So if on this one, if you could send me a message on Instagram, which is at Tyler Jack Harris uh, on Instagram or Facebook uh, at Tyler Jack Harris, uh, send me a message and give me your thoughts on this. I know there's going to be some people with some polarizing um uh, polarizing opinions one way or the other on if luck exists in life. And so let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think. And uh, until next time, this is the sales wolves podcast. This is episode 128. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!